Hello everyone and welcome to PC Retro Tech. In this week's video we're back to graphics programming on old PC and XT machines and I've been cleaning up my assembly language library uh, for graphics programming uh, so that it can be more useful for other people. Uh, so I've been going through and either trying to speed the code up a little bit or remove lines of code that aren't needed or just generally improve the code in whichever way I can. Uh, so I'm going to be sharing the progress that I've been making with you this week and I'm also going to be coding up a little graphics demo effect. Uh, it's really easy to code up but uh, it's a neat little effect and it only uses straight lines. So if you have a fast straight line algorithm uh, you should be able to code this one up. Uh, so I've also been timing the different routines that I have to see how many cycles they take per pixel uh, on a bunch of old machines. So for that I've been using uh, my XT machine which runs at 8 megahertz. Uh, then I have an IBM PC machine, a 5150, which runs at 4.77 megahertz. And on the top here is my 286 uh, in a compact case and it runs at either 12 or 16 megahertz depending on whether you have the turbo switch on. And over in the corner here I have my Amstrad PC1512 which of course has an 8 MHz 8086 CPU. Now we know that this one has a very very slow CGA implementation uh, but it's made up for essentially by the process of being uh, quite quick compared to the 8088. Let's have a look at the code and how it's laid out now. Uh, so I have it in a GitHub repository online called CGA Graphics and there's a link in the description below. Uh, and there are now four different versions of the library in these four directories, small, efficient, fast, and ludicrous. And of course ludicrous stands for ludicrous mode, naturally. And the reason this came about is that uh, when I showed people my initial code, apart from saying that it was a bit messy and hard to use, they said, well what if I'm writing a game and I can't turn interrupts off? It's all very well having the fastest possible code, but if I can't use it, it's no use. And similarly, people said, if I'm writing an assembly demo, I need to save every single byte, and I still want it to run fast, but I don't want it to use much code. And so that's what small does. It's the smallest possible version uh, that still runs fast. Fast is the fastest possible version without, uh, you know, compromises like turning interrupts off or graphical approximation. Those are allowed in ludicrous mode. And uh, efficient is... Uh, sort of a compromise between fast and small. It keeps the code size manageable, but still, you know, reasonable performance, very close to that of fast. Uh, so if I have a look at one of these, uh, small, for example, starts off with a readme text, and it gives the rules. So the small version is going to focus on code size, not performance, although it's not an academic exercise. We're not just trying to make it as small as humanly possible. We still want it to be fast. And this will be within, you know, it'll be two or three times faster than the Ball and Graphics library, for example. And, uh, for example, interrupts will not be turned off and so on. Uh, so all I've put in at the moment is line drawing, uh, but there's now just a single routine for drawing a line, CGA draw line, and it takes the buffer where you want to draw the line. So that could be the CGA memory if you want to draw it directly on the screen, or maybe a buffer in main memory the starting and ending coordinates of the line and the color. So it couldn't possibly be easier to use. And if I have a look at this routine, it's in assembly language of course for Ball and Turbo C. And uh, even Internet Explorer can uh, kind of scroll through this file because it's only uh, 333 lines long. And yes, I know I should be using Google Chrome or something like that, but unfortunately Google Chrome is not working on Windows 7 today for some unknown reason. Uh, anyway, this is a very short program, and in fact there's only about 250 non-blank lines here, which corresponds to about 500 bytes, I think, of uh, actual executable. Uh, so it is indeed very small, and if I go back to the other versions, uh, the uh, fast version, for example, is about 2,000 lines of code, so almost six times more. Uh, Ludicrous doesn't add much more, because it's just turning interrupts off to use the extra register. Uh, but the efficient version is sort of halfway in between. It's about a thousand lines, so half the size, uh, but it's only about 20% slower than fast. Uh, so it's still very, very fast code. So I hope that this is maximally useful for people. Uh, originally when I designed this library, I thought, well, uh, I'd like to have it so that all the routines can run in a clipped window. 
uh, but I've since discovered that that is very, very hard to do, and it's just taking too long to write the routines. And when I get to things like splines, it's just not going to be possible. So I've abandoned that for now and just settled on this four uh, levels of performance and code size. And hopefully people find this interesting enough to actually contribute ideas to, uh, maybe uh, contribute improvements to the actual code if they can find them, and uh, maybe even contribute additional routines to the library. Uh, so because it's an open source GitHub repository, uh, hopefully this will grow, and I'll keep the channel updated on how that goes. Now, the other thing I'll do is put a directory in here for my uh, assembly language demo effects eventually, and uh, so that'll be available here as well. The first thing I'll do is show you the lines actually in action. Uh, so first of all, I'll start off with the small version of the code. So this is the slowest version. And it's just going to draw a thousand lines at random on the screen in random colors, uh, 0 through 3. Uh, and you can see that it's pretty fast and it takes a few seconds to complete. And now I'll run the fast version and it's still going to draw a thousand random lines, but I'm sure you'll agree that it's running way quicker. In fact, it's almost over before it begins. Well, how much difference is there between the fast and the small version of the code? Uh, well, I went ahead and made some timings here, and I've done this on four different machines. Uh, I should have mentioned that the 286 actually has a VGA card in it, so I put an 8-bit Paradise VGA card just emulating CGA. Uh, this one just has a clone CGA card in it, and this has the original IBM CGA card. Of course, the PC1512, as we've noted before, has its own implementation of CGA, which is very, very slow. Uh, so there are two cases to deal with. There are horizontalish and verticalish lines. And this comes about because of the layout of CGA memory. So uh, in CGA memory, all the even lines are stored first, and then all the odd lines. So moving uh, pixels in the vertical direction uh, means changing your location in memory, alternating between odd and even lines. Uh, changing in the horizontal direction means uh, doing bit twiddling. So the, these cases really have to be handled quite differently. And you can see that the fast version is around twice the speed of the small version on the 8088 machines. And uh, on later machines it doesn't seem to make as much difference. Uh, it's maybe 50%. You'll also notice that the speed on the verticalish lines is only about 50% difference, and that's because you can't apply as many tricks uh, for verticalish lines. Uh, with horizontalish lines, you can bundle pixels together because you can wait until you have four pixels in a row and then just write a single byte of CGA memory. Uh, now, the other thing to notice is that uh, the Amstrad PC1512 doesn't do too badly, but it is a little slower than the clone XT, and that's because of that slow uh, CGA implementation. Uh, it certainly benefits quite a lot from the bundling uh, that we do. Uh, the other thing is that the ludicrous mode is not much faster than the fast version, and you know, turning off interrupts and saving that extra register uh, doesn't make all that much difference. There's about one cycle difference in some of the cases, and you save about two or three cycles in the verticalish case. And the reason for that is there's a little bit more setup involved uh, with saving and restoring uh, the SP register, which is necessary if you turn interrupts off. And uh, so that actually slows down the lead-in time for this code. Now, I should mention that all of these are cycles per pixel, uh, but I've subtracted off the constant costs, the setup costs for starting off drawing a line. And that's actually quite significant. It's somewhere between 500 and 1,000 cycles, depending on which version and which machine you're on. Uh, so it really does make a, a difference if you're drawing very, very short lines. But if you're drawing long lines, this is roughly how many cycles per pixel you're going to have uh, in addition to that initial setup cost. Now, the efficient version is only about, uh, say, 20% slower than the fast version. So it's not as big a drop as you get all the way down to the small version. Uh, but obviously, you know, if you're really after that uh, space saving instead of time saving, uh, you know, having one-sixth of the code is certainly worth a 50% drop, or at least I think so anyway. Uh, so those are the timings, and uh, it looks to me like 
everything is about as fast as I can make it go. So uh, I can conceive of a faster algorithm that would use a whole load of pre-computations uh, to do even faster lines, but I think that uh, around about the 80 mark is about as fast as you're going to get uh, for horizontal-ish lines and around about the 95 mark is about as fast as you're going to get for vertical-ish lines. Of course, uh, people are welcome to try and prove me wrong in that, uh, but I can't see any further improvements that could be added to this code. Pretty much everything that I want to be optimal is as optimal as it can be. And what I've been working on in the last week especially is this fast version to try and get that as close as possible to the ludicrous one without all of the uh, downsides of turning off the interrupts. And I think I've been pretty successful there. Uh, it's looking like it's about as fast as it's going to go. Now you might be wondering how I'm testing the output of the line drawing program and obviously you need to look at it visually to see it's cracked. So I wrote this little test pattern program and what it does is it goes through and draws the same test pattern eight different times. One for each of the different uh, positions in the horizontal direction mod 4 and one for each of the different positions in the vertical direction mod 2, so the starting positions of the lines that is and uh, it'll draw lines of varying lengths all the way from length 1 as just a single pixel all the way up to a decent length line and if it gets all the way through this test pattern and displays the correct test pattern at the end uh, then probably the line drawing algorithm is working correctly and so I think I have all four of them working uh, pretty well now. Now all of this line drawing is great and all but what can you actually do with it uh, so I had to sit down and think about uh, how to use just lines to do an interesting demo effect. And uh, this is one that I've been uh, wanting to do for ages. So let me just show you how it runs. Uh, so it starts off with some vertical bars and then it rotates them uh, like a door opening vertically and then shutting again. And uh, I apologize for the flicker here. Unfortunately, this is going to cause a lot of problems for this particular camera because of the changing brightness. And believe it or not, this is actually the minimum flicker that I could get. Uh, so I'd love to say that this is drawing 320 vertical lines and moving them uh, every frame. Uh, but that's not what's going on here. Instead, uh, between each uh, frame and the next, there's very little changes. There's just really the lines at the edge of the bars and at the top of the bars that need to be redrawn. Now, uh, you can't actually get away with just drawing one line uh, uh, for each of those uh, in each frame. And uh, the reason is that you get some nasty artifacts um, because the lines can move more than a pixel and they can actually skip pixels. Uh, so you not, don't end up filling in uh, all of the, uh, the pixels as you move the lines about. Uh, so you have to actually do uh, double up your lines uh, everywhere uh, as you're drawing. Uh, but this gives the appearance that you're drawing nearly a full screen image at a very high speed. Now this is running on the XT, the 8088 running at 8 megahertz, and uh, it's actually using um, uh, very very little time uh, per frame so in fact we're reaching about 43 frames a second here uh, which is really fun uh, but it is an unfortunate problem with uh, these very slow machines that you can only draw a handful of lines uh, every frame remember that the CJ uh, monitor is running at 60 Hertz uh, so you really don't get very much done in each frame now I haven't had to bother with uh, syncing up with the vertical sync here, I'm just drawing straight into CGA memory, not worrying about uh, when I'm doing the drawing, and I think the result is pretty nice. Uh, it has a very nice smooth appearance, and uh, now I'm going to show you the same code uh, but running on the 286 at 12 megahertz. Here it is running on the 286, and you can see it's much much faster. It also has the advantage that because it's running on a VGA card, I can use my LCD monitor, so you don't get that ugly flicker that we had before. Uh, I should mention that I'm running this at 16 megahertz, which is actually twice the speed of the XT, although bear in mind that the, even the emulated CJ is not that much faster than a real CJ card. So it's only the code itself, not the graphics, that speeds up on these machines. Uh, anyway, I think you can agree that this is a very nice effect and it's a very standard thing to just draw the deltas, the bits that change in each frame, 
uh, as a way of speeding things up in assembly language demos. So it illustrates an interesting technique. Uh, unfortunately, that's all I have time for this week, but I hope you've enjoyed this look at uh, how this uh, library is progressing, and I'll keep the channel updated on progress, and uh, we'll see you in a later video. Bye.